Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monti, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. If you're a regular follower, you'll know that I leave my lines on the chart from previous reports so you can see how the targets worked out. And last Friday, which was right here at the very top on that doji, I drew this diagonal line down stating that the end of the line right there, 337.22, would be my price target. And you can see that Monday and Tuesday, we sold off, hit the target on Tuesday, bumped off of that, rallied up on Wednesday with a bullish engulfing pattern. Thursday followed through with a bearish Harami. And now we wound up with a candle that's Fairly strong with regard to the length and the color, but notice down below we have a lower volume day. And that tells us that the market is starting to slow down. The momentum is, is slowing and we have mixed signals here. Obviously with a bullish engulfing, bearish harami, green candle, lower volume, oscillators going up, but not overbought. Could be very confusing. So my forecast for next week is going to be simple, actually. I do think that the Dow is going to reach for another high here, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday especially. But I don't think we're going to blow through that high. It's going to be more or less a, what we saw a week and a half ago back here. Same length, same angle. So my target for the Diamonds is 342.22 on the upside for as long as these oscillators are going up. And keep in mind, longer term, I'm a big bear. I'll get into that maybe in other weekly market reports, but all of the indicators that I'm seeing economically and with regard, especially with PE ratios right now, if you're following the Schiller PE ratio especially, we are more than double the historic level of PE over the years for the history of the market, where the historic PE ratio is around 17. So that's telling us that the markets are overbought, stocks are overvalued, and there's only two ways for the PE ratios to come back in line. Let me just show you this right here. This is the Schiller P.E. ratio that I'm talking about, you can see 17.1 is the all-time historic average. We're at 37.4 right there. 37.4. And no one's even talking about this. If you look at 2000, you can see that the levels at that point were around 34. Prior to the crash of 2008, P.E. ratios were at 28. We're at 37.4. Now, either companies are going to have to double their earnings while inflation numbers are going through the roof. So that's highly unlikely. So the only other way for P.E. ratios to get back close to the normal levels is for prices to drop. So that's why I'm a big bear. I'm looking at the downside. I'm making sure that I'm promoting risk management techniques from you know, any way or angle I can for people to protect themselves. And with option traders, we're trading put spread, we're trading call spreads, we are taking short-term upward legs in, in positions in silver and PAS and other things like that. But please do yourself a big favor and learn how to manage risk, especially using my 1% rule. Because if the markets start dropping and trading below these blue lines here on most of the charts is set up as a 20 period moving average, then you really have to watch out. Now, the cues, I'm going to leave my long-term charts in place, just like this. I have a long-term line that I drew. We're seeing we're drifting off a little bit from the highs recently. I am looking at gaps down below the market, so I'm leaving this in place. Nothing is changing. Again, if you are long and I am wrong, then at least put your stop below that 20-period moving average and you're protecting yourself. Because if I'm wrong and it goes up, you haven't lost anything. You've gained more, actually. You've protected your profits. So that's with the Qs. SPY, taking a look at that, 
I do believe next week we are going to go up just a little bit before we go down. So I'm taking a little bit of a sideline run on this, but I'm keeping the long-term perspective here, just like that. It's the first time I've done this. I think for the short-term Monday and Tuesday, S&P is going to go up, and it's only because oscillators are going up. Volume, although is low, it's still respectively within the higher range of this average. So keeping an eye on the S&P, again, keeping your stops below that 20-period moving average is a good idea. Now, this brings me to the VIX. Volatility index, again, has some conflicting signals. I'm keeping this line in place just like it is. In fact, I'm just going to extend another leg of this like that. Same level, just moving that out. And what do we have here? Well, we have a bearish Harami on Wednesday, followed by a bullish engulfing on Thursday, followed by a bearish Harami on Friday. Well, what do we do here when you see conflicting signals back to back? You use what's called the summation principle. And here's how it works. You take the four-day period and you start with this candle at the opening level right here. So I'm going to just draw it off to the side so you can see what that looks like. Then you take the closing price from today's or the last candle and you match that. And you make the body of the candle look just like that. Now because it opened on the high here, closed on the low, this would be red. Okay. Now you attach the shadows. We have a high that went up to this level, and we had a low that came to this level. So what do we have? Just a big red candle that has a longer shadow on top than on the bottom. So I'm not looking at this as a one-way directional signal at this particular point. I think that the VIX could just hover here for a little while before going higher. But mostly, I believe it's going to start off lower and then eventually move higher because when you get to around 16 you're talking about levels that are historically low on that scale because remember it's an oscillating index if we look at the the weekly chart here you could see that look at what happens when we have a base or a consolidation pattern in the VIX it generally goes through these big spikes and we're long overdue for one of these cyclical rallies in the VIX so we recently filled the gap over here you can see that and once gaps fill if you're following my gap fill trading strategies once the gap fills is now an 80 percent chance that the price will reverse from that level and that's what we see on the VIX now let's follow through with IWM if I look at the Russell 2000 ETF right there I will switch back to the daily chart so you can see my lines and we did hit my forecast remember I said I wasn't crazy thinking the market was going to break down but we did hit the forecast line right there for the Russell my target was 220.99 we hit that on Tuesday Wednesday again bullish engulfing pattern we closed with the green candle and the momentum is still going up on the Russell. So I'm going to forecast that we are going to break out of this high again Monday and Tuesday. And then I think we're going to start to pull back because I don't see any major news coming in that's going to cause this all to go back into a, a raging bull market. Again, there's too many factors that are affecting inflation and the economy. And even yesterday when Joe Biden came out and started talking about his tax hikes, the market dumped and then quickly came back today. But taxes are inevitable. Combine the higher taxes with higher inflation rates. It doesn't look good long term for consumers. And eventually it's going to take its toll on the market. If you'd like to follow along with me, just go to my Twitter page. Follow there. It's at the option Oracle. And then you can get some updates there. I'll post some articles for you so you can catch up with some of the latest, greatest news. And from there, just be sure to follow along with the market report. Please like and share this video because it will help the algorithm. You're doing everyone a big favor by doing that. And I would certainly appreciate it as well. So thanks and have a great weekend. So long.